seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Turns out the unworthy. Okay, that was unexpected. Prepare for battle. Isn't that a pretty <laughs> way to oh, I feel better already. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same boat as Lizard and Danog. I think you have really strong lanes for Team Spirit to play with. They almost have the same play style. You can kind of launch this Monkey King off to a faster start. For one move, I mean, it's more play. Night Stalker offlane has a little bit more to give you. The Luna has some early presence that you can itemize around if you manage to get the timing. So there's some more potential to be aggressive. They're already playing here. Oh, nice arrow. Jeez. He's going to land right onto the backside of the Night Stalker as Afterlife. He's running. He's actually making it out, but no mirror. Barely able to get the right kick off in time to secure the first blood. No uphill misses coming out either, and I believe he got kind of lucky with the dice roll as to how much damage was dealt with that final right click. Still, first blood already secured, and another game, Jonathan, where we have a five-on-five -five engagement before the bounty runes have even spawned up. They just run okay. down mid. If they find a punishment, they can poke here, but it doesn't have the leap, so maybe a little bit more. No level it's committed yet from Panaboom. Does go for the impetus now to harass out. Mm. Should at least equalize the bounty rings for a the bit. Battle begins. Interesting decision though, right? Because you could have gone for... In fact, hold that thought, because bounty rings are going to be kind of fought over here, and it seems like Seiyu is dropping rather on the hoodwink now, but is going to be able to make it out. Should be a, a two for two train on the bounty rings anyway. I was trying to say, John, is I, I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for maybe the level one enchant there for, for Panto, because it it felt like you might have been able to get the kill onto Mira. I suppose with the impetus, you're just going to look to dominate the lane anyway, but it's a interesting choice. Yeah, I think it's down to what you want in this lane as well, down bot, right? Like you pick the enchantress to block off the boars, so you know the Beastmaster is going to go for the Axis and you want to have more presence against that, which the attendance or the impetus allows you to have. If you go for enchant level 1 here, yeah, you can still go for slow plays, try to chase down, but it drags your Luna away from the farm. You just want her to focus in, build up in that lane. You got that early start into the madness and just going to go on. So impetus does feel like a good call. I think enchant, the aggression is nice, but it doesn't tie into what you want to do with Luna, man, right? Like in the long term of the lane phase for the first five minutes, that level 1 enchant's really not going to do much. And both sides are blocking off the large camp anyway. You are seeing Phantom M trade quite nicely. Yes! Arrow, gonna connect, Mira, he's manning up, Panto doesn't have a free fire here, John, he might just drop, though he tries to, no, he's not gonna make it. My pet loves Battles for support, sometimes they just decide to not back off, and well, Mira, he knew he had a fairy fire, and the Ench didn't. He got good timing on the use of his uh, salve as well, as he was getting the kill, pops the salve, a great start already for Team Spirit down bot. Up top, a little bit of a back and forth. Saw you kind of playing tag, at least sniping out Maposhka's courier, but you're still kind of having that start in the Monkey King that you'd want. Lane's a bit more shoved in. 
afterlife can at least harass out a little bit with a void. You don't have like a stun setup lane for the Monkey King to just play around, build up Jingu freely outside of his Boundless. So it's not like an overwhelming lane for Yatoro with the Winter Wyvern around. However, every time that Arctic Brand is up, it does hurt Sayu a lot. Now, already down to very low HP. At least has the head risk to regen through. I don't think Mipashko minds too much. He's still getting the good zoning he wants and giving Yatoro that smooth start. You want to see the Monkey King. Interesting to see though, Yatoro is going for the Battle Fury here, Mike. So Power Threads into Radiant's Battle Fury kind of wants to keep up with that Luna's farming pace. It certainly feels like a bit of a gradier kind of build to go here, especially with the, the draft of Team Spirit seemingly much more aggressive, but I, I guess you do want to just kind of keep match with the Luna, make sure she doesn't kind of outscale and outfarm you, and of course Yatoro is going to know a lot better than I do, that's for sure. Of course, how's that mid lane going? Toronto and, uh, and Millager are going to be going at it here on the, the Kunkka and the Tiny. So far, favoring Millager on the Tiny, and Toronto going to be slightly behind, but should be able to catch up quite easily now. Anything to watch out for in this mid lane matchup, John? Not too much, really. It ends up being a pretty even farming lane. Bottle prioritization is probably more for Melodule to spam out his avalanche toss, but you don't really worry about that too much as a conquer. You kind of just want your bracers done, you want your fast boots done, and just don't. run around, hit your level 6, threaten with your boat combination. You do have the supports to be aggressive down the line. Marana rotation with the X combo, pretty scary. So they're going to have to keep their vision game up here in one move and track those supports. Melodjo no. sneak over and just pick himself up a, a bounty there on the tiny, so get away with a, a free bounty from the dire end of things. Little pick up from him. Gonna miss too many creeps on his arm on his way back in either. I believe he missed maybe one or two. The prize is back to farming though. So two kills in the favor of Spirit. It does feel like the laning stage though is gonna be rather slow anyway. You look at every lane and maybe the, the best kill potential we have is down at the uh, rather up the top lane. Maybe Mira can, you know, snipe Panto with a nice arrow, and in fact, he might have a chance now, but... Won't bother... Because you wouldn't have the backup damage anyway from Collapse quite yet. Even with the level 2 Wild Axes, it's just not enough damage. As long as they can get that initial farm and XP up here for the Beastmaster, they'll be more than happy with the way the lane's going. You are up against an inch anyway, so you're kind of expecting to lose the lane as, as Team Spirit here down at the bot side, but... <laughs> I think with the way the lane's going, they should still be pretty happy. They're pretty satisfied. Collapse is still building into the Dominator typing that we saw him hit last time with Lycan. Uh, even without the summon, still pretty Dyer's good for the Beastmaster to play around with. Attack. The Luna's actually not free farming as much as you'd expect. It's still a strong lane for Knight, but it's not looking as strong as Yotoro as they do find that kill in Sayu. So you're racking up the Monkey King in CS and the kills. And it's just down to what the Night Stalker lane's like during daytime. It, it doesn't do much in the first few... <laughs> minutes of the game first five minutes feels really slow for night stalker even the first night time you can be a bit more aggressive but you don't necessarily look for those kills you kind of just want to keep that farm game hit your six and maybe play around when you have a couple of bracers which is still somewhat of a ways off here Ooh, a, a bit of a rock and a hard place but even mid lane melodjul he's gonna cop the boat to the face i mean they'll get under attack wyvern but they lost their mid tiny for that toronto tokyo able to secure a solo pick off onto that mid tiny and that's a really bad sign and a really bad start for the Tiny now. This bot lane, a bit more action to come out. Panto, in a bit of trouble, but now Knight has to be careful himself. He does at least find Mirror before he does. Well, he's not actually going to go down. He's going to keep fighting. Panto does actually drop himself on the edge. Knight's going to be fine to walk his way out. And then uh, that ice armor he, he did receive, she gave him quite a bit of bonus armor to actually survive all the right clicks of Collapse there on the Beastmaster. You're going to be happy enough with that trade for one move, a kill coming out for your Luna. Um, not quite the solo EXP gain you'd want for Knight. Still fairly Dyer's satisfied, not going for the Eclipse anyway, as you want to go farming here. Dyer's you're finding some wins top. here and there. The Luna's still having a great time. You've got the triangle fairly secured in this game. Um, not many gotcha. wards being dropped by Team Spirit to keep track of that buildup for the Luna this time around. So as long as you hit the Mask of Madness timing, you're still pretty good in the Flash farm. And again, your Monkey King is still working onto Battle Fury. The farm is looking good for Yatoro, but that timing is not just in line with the Mask of Madness. Luna will have an early item advantage here for sure. Top lane. Knight Stalker. Oh, that's a very nice push whack. Say you. Gonna kind of save the day for now, but Yatoro is still in the chase's mirror. Goes for a cheeky arrow, but not going to be able to land it. Afterlife with that night time. Gonna have plenty of movement speed to be able to get himself out of there. Very nice save, though, from Seiyu's. Had it not been for that bushwhack, there was just no chance of survival. 
You're just dodging really well right now in one move, trying to build up. And it's still a slow lane for afterlife here, Mike. Bottom upward core. Still level four. No threat of the level six Dark Ascension to start running around. And as long as you're suppressing the Night Soccer, even if you're not finding kills, Team Spirit's fairly happy. Again, they've got a draft that kind of wants to take it a little bit slower. They want to buy space for Yatoro. As long as they ensure he's farming, you're pretty good. Down bot, though, collapse. Oh, that nice set up. Panto able to get the slow off with the enchant and even have the Wild Wing Ripper going as well. So Knight going to secure his second kill of the game here on the Luna. Happy days for him. And well, speaking of Night John, we haven't talked about him too much this game, but he's having a very good start. 3.6k net worth, second net worth only to, to Toronto Tokyo there on the mid Punka. So happy days so far for the Pos 1 of 1 move. Yeah, I mean, he's already got the Mask of Madness flying out as well. So the Flash Farm can truly kick in for Night now. And the Triangle has not been spotted out too much by Team Spirit outside of that one Flash with Maposhka. So you still have a lot of flash farm left. Come and here. if Team Spirit don't kind of apply that pressure in that area of the map, you could have a problem. Because again, your Monkey King's going to take a long time to match that farm. Despite the aggression coming out from Yatoro, the Battle Fury Arcane is just power. a much more high net for the item, right? It costs a lot more. The farming Dyer's rate of Monkey top isn't top as fast. And you're seeing Panto kind of look for the aggression. He's fucking on Collapse. He's doing a great job of it. Collapse is going to drop once again as Melodjul. He's going to rotate on the Tiny to make sure they have the damage out. And... Well, quite frankly, I don't even think they needed the mid-tiny. The collapse, or rather Toronto Tokyo now, is going to show up on the Kunka. With Mirror on the Mirana, but 3v2, they don't want this fight. Instead, Knight can be focused down, but in the meantime, Mirror has gone down to Melodjaws. Now Toronto Tokyo may have gone a bit too far on the Kunka. Radiance Very nice body blocks coming up from attack. Panto, but ultimately he will still be able to walk his way out. But for Melodjul, he got a two-for-one special there, John. Finding the Beastmaster and the Marana right after. That's pretty scary. Those are big kills to give away to the mid-tiny. That blink timing for Melodjul is going to be lining up fairly quick here, Mike. And it's kind of like what we said about Team Spirit last time, right? They needed a fast blink on their tiny to get aggressive. Same thing goes here for one move. Once Melodjul does have the blink up, you can expect Blessings the tiny to take the initiative. Warrior. Keep that pressure up. Kind of punish Team Spirit for maybe going for a more farm-heavy playstyle here. And they're already doing a great job of cutting off some top camps as well. You make a fine crater. Well, I actually commit the roll there just for Panto, but it seems like they really just want to get rid of this inch and Dive start moving into scan. that tier one bottom tower. So roll being committed. I think the first kill with that being used up. Still so now knowing that one move might be able to find some more aggression here in this game number two. Does seem like maybe there's not too many plays they can really make. Everyone from Team Spirit kind of just huddled off together, apart from Maposhka. And it seems like instead Radiant they're going to try and trade the, the T1 towers in the opposing lanes. But to be fair, one move. Not really started yet on the top T1, but to life Dyer's eventually will get going. Meanwhile, mid lane, Toronto, Tokyo, and Mira are going to show up seeing Panto once again. Radiant's bottom they won't be able to close the gap, attack. though. Toronto, unable to get the X off onto Panto, is going to have to watch him walk out. And in the meantime, they are still taking the bottom T1 with just your Tora. Dyer's top it's a slow go, but attack. eventually it will give Panto. way. Yes. He kind of just went back in. Radiance Arrow does connect, but it seems attack. like he's confident he'll be able to survive with just the hills out. And Toronto kind of just misses everything. Yeah, the young man should connect. It's Prize that point where the inch with untouchable Dyer's up. You have to land every tide burn really to get the kill. They get one, but they don't really have a quick wave to kind of sustain true. That does buy them space to clear out spot. I think this is also a lot of space for one move, though. The pressure of pops ramping up. They've got Dark Ascension here. Maposhka showed himself, but there's your Dark Ascension being forced out. They've got the curse to play with as well. Knight really wants that tier 1 tower and will find it. But Posh is still trying to find a way to set up though. But instead, Afterlife looks like he has been caught, but no X back into the arrow. Rather, they do save it for the boat, but Afterlife might still. No, never mind. Toronto. He was confident enough with the Tidebringer to get the job done. So go for another. Say you trying to run with the sharpshooter out, but it's just not going to be enough. Mira securing the kill with the urn. Team Spirit. Oh, they lost the top tier 1, but. They clean up this top lane, that's for sure. Find a really nice set of kills. Great kill on Night Stalker, slow that progression down on the armlet. 
Uh, again, one move probably doesn't mind too much. Knight, he's still getting space, goes into the triangle, still no aggressive wards dropped by Team Spirit. So very secure position for your Luna to farm up. Doesn't quite have the network lead, should be able to find that soon. Toronto Tokyo is still maintaining number one off the back of his aggression. And they are starting to play around now. They've got that blink on Melo Jewel, they've got aggression lined up. Roar out again, they really want Panto dead, but a big avalanche tosses there. Melo Jewel coming in just in the nick of time. It's Toronto trying to help out, but Ooh. doesn't have the boat to throw out. It's collapsed, still juking and jiving, but eventually Melo Jewel does secure the kill. Toronto Double looking for an X back, is going to go on to Seiyu. Once again, the boat almost up. They'll just secure Seiyu's line. Well, your sails, but good. They want a bit more, though. Toronto, Tokyo, going to move in with your Toro. They'll see Afterlife, they'll go for a battle of South, but you're not close enough, surely, to be able to lock him down, and eventually he will get close enough to the Tier 2 to just walk away. Lots of commitment out from Spirit trying to play up against the tempo that One Move is showing. And One Move's done a great job of making this a harder game for Collapse. Right, the Impact of your Beast Master combination is still there, but he's not pushing as much. They catch one, though. Ooh, nice click away, though. He was very calm about that one, Melo Jewel. Not reacting whatsoever to the X, just kind of standing there and getting ready to blink out. Team Spirit. Going to that mid-tier one tower once again. War is not up, so you don't have the greatest setup here for a team fight, but Toronto, he can go for the X back onto Panto. We've seen this one before, though, and they miss again. Now, Melo Jewel, he'll get an avalanche toss out, collapse, in a bit of danger, is going to run his way out of the Kamukon's command as the curse, going to lock three of them down, Panto's gone, and so is Melo Jewel, up to life, well, he's going to go for a run with this Dark Ascension, but they've lost two big targets already, and that's with all of it being missed, they didn't get the combo they wanted. Yeah, they don't get the combination, but they still have a Radiant's lot of team fights to follow through, they're not just right. hinging on that... Arrow X, he, the Winter Skirts and Wukong's combination is still really strong. The damage output coming through from Knight there, just making short work of that soft, squishy inch. And that allows him to push that mid tier one. So, taking more control of the jungle, maybe start to apply those forward wards that they need to see. He just keep it right into the outpost here, John. Collapse does have Roar up, and we've seen this before. He, he loves committing. He won't do it this time, though. Instead, Melo Jewel has shown up on the mid tier, and he's trying to go after Mirror, but he's going to be all right. Instead, the target will now be Maposhka. But he's also going to be fine to just fly his way out. Rotations from one move not really panning out. Though maybe they can set up on the Toronto Tokyo mid lane. Melo Jewel is in with the Avalanche and the toss back up. Bushwhack and Sharpshooter both going to be there. Toronto dropping very low. Does get the boat out in time, but it's not going to matter. Nice pick up there from one move. Nice big kill, knowing that the Konko was isolated, Dyer's knowing that Team Spirit was just clumped attack. up in the jungle and backed off. See a nice, a big opportunity to at least uh, give themselves a nice kill. I think the side of one move, the concern is still the fact that you don't really have an effort to be able to win. They catch more here. Oh, they love just killing off Panto with the roar. Just no Sorry. hesitation from Collapse. Every time he sees him, he will just commit the roar. He just wants that kill every time. Yeah, again, it's been a bit of a slower game for Collapse. They just kind of want to get the kills, try to ramp up, get the levels going on that Beastmaster. The cooldown on that roar reduces massively as the levels go up, so just finding some kills accelerates that process. Again, the concern for one move right now, Mike, is your lead on Knight just isn't that big. It's 8.3k up against a 7.2 and 7.1k Monkey King and Kunkka. Luna's almost like the out, and I think Lizard points this out. You need to farm a lot on Luna to really feel big. You have a great platform potential, though. Hello, Jewel. Hey, he shows up. He kind of went out of the fog there and does get caught out with the X back into the boat, and now the torrent is going to connect with Melo Jewel. He'll go for a run, but the curse is going to connect from a Poshka, and Melo Jewel just cannot blink out of this. They show up, but they were just under Hawk Vision anyway. Team Spirit, a very easy setup. His afterlife, he'll go for a run, but he might just drop as well. Nice armlet toggling, but does it matter? But now it does. Still on the run. In the meantime, Panto is going to go down on the end. Afterlife somehow still running back towards his fountain as Mirror. That's a very cheeky Ooh. arrow, but he's Radiant's not going to land it. Is under attack. Nice angle from Mirror, but... Afterlife, I think he got a brief glimpse of it. Yeah, it's a bit messy again for Team Spirit, right? Like, they get the X, they don't get the arrow, they don't even get the Boundless. That's why 
to kind of miss out on afterlife, but it doesn't matter. Like, you're still finding other targets, you're still causing havoc onto one move, making it fairly uncomfy for them to kind of get an angle back into these fights, and they never back off. Team Spirit are still holding that mid lane. Warren, not gonna land. Say you, gonna go for a run, but Melon Jewel? No, not gonna be spotted out. Maybe he moves back in though, Toronto. Yeah. Pretty spicy kill here for Melodjul, so he will try with the toss back into Seiyu. They've got Knight around with the Eclipse out as well, but Toronto, he gets a BKB off, and now the Cold Embrace will save him for now. The arrow going to fly right through Toronto. He gets the boat out, and he is going to be fine for now, but Afterlife is going to show off as Toronto somehow still running. In the meantime, they've caught Mira on the Mirana, and he will drop. They even got Maposhka. He does commit the curse, but he's still going to go as well. Dyer's Bit of a wasted curse there. Attack. On the bright side, they Dyer's save their mid Kunkka. But they are going to lose this mid tier 1 tower. And you still have a lot of push coming out from one move, one of the benefits of, of the Luna. Dyer's as the panel pointed out, easy fallen. to shove in objectives after a team fight win. And you're feeling very secure now at night. You've got that early BKB 2k lead. Not massive, but enough for the Luna to play with. Straight into the Roche they go. Team Spirit, he could try to play around with the Hawk Vision. He needs to find that Roche. He can't allow it to go off for free. Wukong's is almost done, or almost off cooldown for Yatoro, but great timing for one. They're playing around this Night Vision really well. They've got the advantage every time it's nighttime with the Luna, with the Night Stalker. They just can see a lot further and kind of just prevents Spirit from getting your angle so. With a rush, this should allow them to play a little bit more, but Team Spirit, yeah, they're still kind of clumped up and they smoke up here. They're gonna try and force the fight, still one move. They are looking like the stronger team right now. At really, least in terms of the, the way their carries have built up. If you look at this Luna, Knight, he's having a pretty nice game right now. 11k net worth lead on that Luna. It's only getting to the stage where you are starting to, starting to get a little bit more concerned here if you are Team Spirit. I say that, but they are smoked up and just rushing towards one move. Nice boundless strike out from Yatoro into an arrow follow up, but they don't want to fully commit. Yatoro gonna back himself out as now the toss is there. Maposhka gonna be fine. Meanwhile, Toronto Tokyo, he's caught Afterlife on the Night Stalker. They'll bring him back into the boat, into the torrent, and they'll take him down. Yatoro, fourth kill of the game for himself. Smell a jewel. He'll TP out on the tiny. Team Spirit, I mean, even if they look like the. Even if their Radiant heroes look a little bit weaker, they're just, they're not afraid. They still went out the fight. Yeah, I mean, one move does manage to back off properly. They don't sacrifice the Aegis there, but they're not the ones taking initiative here, Mike. They spotted out the smoke with their ramp ward a while ago, forcing yep. Team Spirit to kind of wait out that opportunity for the kills. So they still find something for their trouble. And one move is still just kind of playing this farm game. Yeah, you're getting the build up on the loot. You're going into the shard. You might be going into that silver edge next for a little bit more damage. You're still not really overwhelming the Monkey King with net worth. And it's still within 1k gold here for Yatoro with a Battle Fury. And he already has this nice little crit stick up. So the damage output's getting up there. Once the BKBs fly in for Team Spirit, it feels dicey for one move. He does. They're going to try and force a fight now. Collapse going to be scattered out. Hello, Jewel. I'm just going after the backside, but he cops the raw. On the tiny, he's unable to get the initiation off, so now he's in big trouble. X Torrent is there. Even the arrow to connect, but a nice four star. Gonna buy him a bit of time, but surely not enough. Melodul's gonna drop. Afterlife, he'll keep trying to get this team fight going. The Wyvern is gonna run away and have the cold embrace back up and available if he needs it. Oh, but he doesn't. Yeah. That's pretty rough. This is your Aegis timing as well. As one move, like you're running as a unit trying to Radiant use this age of stuff, but is under attack. it's just not happening. Nah, it's really not. I mean, you just don't see the good openings for Knight to walk in, use that BKB. Toronto? They know the Luna is in that tree line. Arrow will connect, locking him down, but they don't have the follow up yet. It's being very Radiant annoying from the low ground as now the Hawk attack. Vision gonna make this team fight a lot easier for Spirit. With your Toro, has been well, he's not even moving his way in. It's just a 4v2 situation, or rather 4v3 is the arrow once again. Gonna miss the knight. He's in such big trouble. Another phase. Eventually, he will lose the Aegis. On the brighter side, they found Mira. On the Mirana is Toronto. He'll just BKB TP up. Meanwhile, this Night Stalker, bot lane, is going down. The Melodule does get Maposhka, but Afterlife's gonna die to your Toro. That's your best. 
Yeah, it's, very it's pretty fragmented. Very, very fragmented from almost both sides. Like, you're not connecting the way you want to on Steam Spirit, but it feels a lot harder for one move with how their team fight's going. They are locking in Yatoro. He does not have a BKB, so he's fairly easy to chase. He's still a mobile monkey. So I've managed to bail out, and now Toronto Tokyo's here. No Aegis. You don't right? have an Aegis this time, Knight. You don't have that Aegis. He's going to BKB up, but the Eclipse is going to come out. Back to Toronto, he's the one that made a mistake here as he tries to run with the Essence Ring being popped, but surely there's no way out. Moonlight Shadow popped, but it's not going to be enough. He does drop. Team Spirit, though, still rushing uh, towards Knight, who does go back to farm, but collapses right behind him. Raw connects. Do they have the damage? Nice four stuff away. Knight still running, but Yatoro right behind him to take him out. They even found the edge. That was a very greedy spot to farm in from Knight. Right after you saw Team Spirit, and well, he gets a great kill on Toronto, but gets punished immediately. And that equalizes it for Team Spirit. They come out on top, even though they sacrifice their Konka. Big target to take with Athluna. Now number two in network, you don't have a... You don't really have a gold advantage at all. I mean, overall net worth for Team Spirit's 5k up, but you are always banking on Luna. Again, kind of like the Alchemist in game one, to at least maintain 4k above. And we've seen that a lot with Lunas. That tends to be like the sweet spot to start to feel really strong. You don't you don't have that overwhelming item advantage here. The Monkey King Battle Fury investment from Yatoro has paid off, has his BKB up, and this is the point where Radiance all of one moves plays, all of their control just kind of dissipates. Their burst damage with Radiance Tiny Blink Avalanche is kind of gone. Their control with Night Stalker disappears. Like there's no threat in the monkey anymore. It feels like Yatoro is just free to jump in and do what he wants as long as he's got his spells ready. Oh, nice battle strike out. He's found the Night Stalker once again. Yatoro will just move right in as Afterlife. He is forced to pop the Dark Ascension and try to force a fight. One move. They're going to move their way in. After Yatoro, they might be able to catch him, oh. but no, he primal springs right out. The life still has a bit of time here with the Dark Ascension to try and find a, a way to get a good fight going, but it doesn't seem like they're even going to try and force this any longer. In fact, Panto. Arrow's gonna connect, and he will slowly but surely just die as they kill him from a distance. They don't even get near him. Tips out yeah. the Metal Jewel. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you did there, but you know, they're feeling confident in Team Spirit. They know they've hit his time again. And to hold back against one who's really a gold advantage. Now you're just smoking, they're confident, but they're really easy. They know they've got a lot of pressure in hand, they just need to find some kills. And through the mid lane they go. Four man smoke up. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Well, side of one move, they're Radiant very well aware that this is not the kind of fight they need to take right now. Please wait till all your heroes are back up. Toronto, Tokyo. Radiance middle tower is under Somebody attack. down. Dump in. Oh, that's a great start. But Poshka, he's in with a fantastic curse on the two main calls. Right into the boat. See you later! That's a perfect initiation from Mapochka! Off the Panto they go! I mean, I want to see five tips there, John, come on! <laughs> Probably on cooldown there, Mike, here to use them all up on Team Spirit. Straight into the push! Excellent team fight again. They, they have such great ways of controlling here on Team Spirit. The blink on Mapochka, the investment that the Wyvern has managed to find is just paying off. And with a Beastmaster on hand, Radiance doesn't take too long to just go for the big objective. Let's defend the Ancients. The tier fours are going to go. Oh, but, yeah, they've got five back available. They'll commit eventually. His afterlife, he does get a tree cut onto the Monkey King tree, but now has been caught out anyway. I believe a GG call's coming very soon here, John. They will buy back on afterlife as well. Can they punish? Melodjul, that's a great avalanche out, but the battle strike is there, Toro still fighting in Toronto. He's gonna move back in, onto the Tiny, they'll fight Melodjul a second time. Afterlife, <laughs> he's trying to run, he'll barely make it out. Meanwhile, Mira, oh, he gets sniped. He does get taken down, but in goes Toronto once again as the buyback is there from Mira. Both will be taken by Knight through the backside, and Knight's just gone. No buyback available. Panto. It's a bit of a slower process here on the edge, but eventually they might just be able to get this done as afterlife. 
Save your buddy syndrome. Kiki in here as he tries to keep the fight going, but it is just going to drop. And the GG call, it does come out from one move. Another one-sided affair here from Team Spirit. And they continue just going on undefeated, John. There's no contest here for the, uh, the TI-10 champs. Yeah, they're on a roll. Not a single game drop, not a single series drop, and they play extraordinary well in a series.